Hi everyone, Max here with Fiction Rant, where I give my thoughts on all things sci-fi and fantasy. If you agree with me or disagree with me, that's great! You're watching this video, so I'm assuming you love sci-fi and fantasy too, and I'd love to see your thoughts if you comment below. In this video, I'd like to raise the question. In Star Wars, why does nobody use the old reliable standby of using a lightsaber with an offhand shield, or to put more simply, why does nobody use sword and board? There's a reason why so many people across so many cultures use shields. They're really great at helping you to not die. Let me start off by mentioning that one time I've heard of in Star Wars from the old material that Disney so helpfully deleted from the continuity of a Jedi using something akin to the sword and board in combat. That was, of course, Luke Skywalker in his fight with the Dark Lady of the Sith, Lumia. She used a light whip to defeat him in their first encounter by taking advantage of the fact that all Luke could really do with a single blade was just block, and her whip would wrap itself around his lightsaber, making him incapable of doing anything but else but block. He then won their rematch by bringing along a second, shorter lightsaber, akin to the parrying dagger used by duelists in the Middle Ages. With the second blade, he was able to bind up the light whip and then go on the offensive with his main blade, winning the duel. This is the only time I've heard of when somebody explicitly brought along something to a lightsaber duel that specifically was only meant to block. Plenty of Sith and Jedi have used dual lightsabers or double-bladed sabers, but they're never really used in this way, much to the dismay of everyone who lost a hand or more during a lightsaber battle. What I'm talking about is more along the lines of using one of several materials or devices used in Star Wars that can resist lightsaber blows and that would make someone using such a device quite the formidable foe. Let me address the one obvious rebuttal to what I'm talking about here. No, I still don't think that the typical Jedi would use this combination of gear regardless of how effective it would be, not because it's a bad idea, but because the Jedi and their combat techniques are based on the samurai and they basically just don't use shields. That said, I do think that an oddball Jedi absolutely could go sword and board and not break anything. We've already got Ezra Bridger from Star Wars Rebels building and using a lightsaber that had a built-in blaster, so this really doesn't seem that far out to me. So uncivilized. There's also the Sith, who aren't really famous for fighting fair, who could do all sorts of things with a bit of armor plating. Though they'd probably install spikes or something just so they could be extra nasty while fighting. Granted, this is Sith more like Maul, not like Dooku or Palpatine. Dooku is a bit too classy to wear spikes, and Palpatine prefers not to fight with a saber at all. <laughs> Though neither are really above fighting dirty. Here he is, Dooku getting out of a losing fight by endangering the defenseless. Finally, there's everyone else who can or has used lightsabers. The Mandalorians are an obvious example, and in fact, Din Djarin, the Mandalorian from the Mandalorian, made good use of his Beskar armor to deflect blows from a lightsaber in his fight versus Moff Gideon. So there you go, right? We've already got an example of sword and board in canon Star Wars. Well, kinda. The use of shields in this way has been more incidental than intentional. Din Djarin didn't get a set of Beskar armor made so he would be better in a lightsaber fight, he got it to deflect blaster fire, and it happened to save his life against a lightsaber. I'm thinking of something a bit more purpose-built. First question, of course, is what would a shield like this be made of? Beskar, obviously a good candidate, because it's already been demonstrated on screen to hold up well against lightsaber blows, and even just a pair of bracers would be highly useful to a duelist. Another, arguably better candidate, in my opinion, is Cortosis, which has really only showed up in the Expanded Universe, but thanks to the novel A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller, Cortosis is also now canon, so it could be used. Cortosis would make a phenomenal shield, as not only would it resist lightsaber blows, but it could also cause them to shut down briefly on contact, and I for one would consider being able to shut off my opponent's lightsaber at will a pretty big advantage. Again, even just a pair of bracers made of this material would be super useful in a duel. But who are we kidding? A full-size shield would be way more cool. The last material for a shield is, of course, a shield. Or rather, an energy shield of some kind. During the battle for Naboo in Episode 1, the Gungans made good use of handheld shields that could block bastard fire and, presumably, also resist lightsaber blows. This one is a tad odd, since the version the Gungans used had this frame around the outside, which presumably isn't lightsaber-resistant, 
which would make the whole shield kind of useless since presumably if that frame gets damaged, the shield ceases to work. You could, of course, just armor that frame with Beskar or Cortosis, but that's a bit of a stretch. That said, the energy shield would have one advantage that anyone who died during Order 66 would have loved, and that is potentially complete coverage on the shielded side against blaster fire. Poor Kiari Mundi. I bet you wish you had some good old Gungan tech on your side about now. A more limited size shield that is also helpfully showed up in the animated series is the personal combat shields that some Mandalorian warriors, particularly members of Death Watch, utilized in the Clone Wars series and in Rebels. These were more like a buckler in size, but could still block blaster fire and lightsabers, though they would not provide as thorough of coverage as the Gungan equivalent. An honorable mention for materials is dunium, a highly durable metal used in starship construction, though they really don't give you a ton of information on what its actual defensive capabilities are. It's just mentioned in the Thrawn books as a plot device, and while the books are great, it really doesn't explain a lot, so I would relegate that to either being as good or worse than the other materials, but in any case, there are absolute materials available that could serve this function. So there you go. Multiple kinds of shields that in combination with a lightsaber would be a formidable combination of attack and defense. Keep in mind also that the shield itself can potentially be a weapon as well. I was only kind of joking earlier when I suggested that the Sith warriors might use Beskar spikes or Cortosis spikes or whatever to be able to block and impale their enemies. But even without such adornments, a more traditional shield can also be a formidable weapon on its own, as demonstrated by Captain America in everything he's ever been in. And of course that bit from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier where John Walker bludges a guy to death with the edge of Cap's old shield. There is of course a major downside to using shields and armor in Star Wars from a cinematic perspective. You get way less of these memorable scenes. <laughs> Okay, granted, a shield probably wouldn't have stopped Anakin from being chopped to bits by Obi-Wan. So anyway, there's my thoughts on why on earth does nobody in Star Wars use sword and board? I'd say that the benefits of being able to block deadly blows pretty effectively speaks for itself, and the Star Wars universe clearly has the materials that are capable of doing so. Please, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, give us some more Mandalorian content where he demonstrates just how awesome Sword and Board can be. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. This is my first video ever, but I am hoping to make this into a series. And if you agree, disagree, or just have something to add, please comment. And if there is some kind of technology or combination of technologies in Star Wars, Star Trek, or anywhere else that you feel is horribly underutilized, please comment that too, and let's get a discussion going. I'd also like to give a huge shout out to my sister-in-law who created the thumbnail for this channel. It looks awesome, and for anyone else who wants to see more of what she can do, her Instagram link is in the description below. Thanks everyone.